Hello and welcome to another episode of Banded Fishing UK. In the, in this episode, I'm fishing the Cardiff Foreshore, which we haven't managed to get a video on before, and it, but it's one of our favourite marks, especially mine. I love the place. Yes, it's a bit ugly, but fishing-wise, it can be fantastic all year round as well. Today, my target's going to be Thornback Rays, and they can be caught all year at the at the foreshore, but generally March to September are the best months with a good run in April obviously I'm a little bit early for that this year I will come back there are whispers of a few around which is always a good sign uh, I've got both my rods out already no bites as yet the tides just flooding in so I'm gonna fish up to high water and back a couple of hours probably as well two hours so I'll probably get about five or six hours fishing but it's glass, the water's like glass, it's flat calm. Perfect ray weather. You couldn't ask for a better day. Looks like a pond, doesn't it? It doesn't even look, look like the sea is so calm. But uh, yeah, rods are out. Let's see if we can get a couple of rays. Well, I didn't expect one of those today. A little plump Bristol Channel cod, codlin, even tiny little fish. Nice to see. And that came on the up and over. And squid and bluey. First cast, a fish. Can't fault that. A second cast on that same rod with the up and over, which is the right hand rod. I got a little tap again, like a trembling bite. Just gonna see if there's a fish on it. Another one. Odd, must be a spring run. I won't complain, mind. Lovely fish, isn't it? Gorgeous little fish again, squid and bluey. Little ray bait. Who needs black lug? Let's get this one back. Let's talk through my tactics for today and my setup. I've got my pair of Ziplex M4 GTs, which are ideal for this sort of fishing on the clean ground. It looks rough, it is rough and close with all, the, all these stones, but as long as you work hard, you'll get it up and over the stones because we're casting onto mud or silt, which is about 60 or 70 yards out. Um, I've got a, two big multiplayers on the rods, a casting special, pen casting special, sorry, and a, a slosh 30. 20 pound line on both with I think 70 pound shock leaders on which is, which is plenty I'm using six and a quarter ounce weight not mixed weight on both rods so that's 70 is loads for that um, on the one rod I've got a pulley my standard setup for the upper channel short pulley pair of Tronics Pro big dogs it's actually a hound rig but it, I still use it up here it's good for like thornbacks conga codlin these hooks are great for that, especially on the clean. If I was fishing on the really rough, I don't know if I'd use them all the time. Because you're not going to bend those out. That's down to an imp. You've seen these rigs before, so I won't bore you with that. And on my other rod, which I've caught two small codling on already, is an up and over with a, a five to six foot trace. Both rigs are 80 pounds straight through, 80 pound body, 80 pound snood. And on that, I'm using on the foot, oh sorry, on the pulley, I'm using herring for the, to start off anyway. And on the up and over, I've been using a squid and bluey wrap. Small baits, like Jason says, about the size of your thumb. You don't need anything massive. And that's uh, a Varivus, big mouth on the bottom, and another big dog on the top. But someone's just uh, just lost a raid to my right. So things are looking up. With a bit of luck, they'll start pushing through now.
that's not how you do it. Hopefully that didn't run out now. Feels like a decent fish, this one. I've had a bit of a nightmare, but a crack off. Could have set my other rod up, and this is gone now. Moved over. Trying to get it up and over the stones, but it's staying deep. Something out there. Going to my left. It's a ray of some sort. I just saw its uh, fin come out of the water. Its wing would come out of the water, my life. I keep it up to the stones, fighting to the end. Still going. Go on. Nice going back. Oh, nice one. Yeah. Should I have nice. been stopping it? Yeah. Huh? First ray of the year for me. First session of the year for me because of lockdown, so I'm happy with that. Target achieved. That's on the up and over, bluey and squid. Lovely fish. Oh. There we are, first ray of the year. First thrown back. Middle thorn back, just going back. Oh, I had a bit of a nightmare there before I had a bite. I had a crack off, I think the lime is a bit tight on the reel. Plus, I'm a little bit rusty. I haven't been fishing since sort of Christmas time. So, yeah, a little bit snatchy on the cast. I didn't get a chance to set up the shock leader. They had that bite on the, the thorn back. Nice little ray. So, it's time to get a new shock on you. So, I'm going to do the spider hitch, which is now our go to knot. Been Lloyd's favourite for quite a while. But, uh, it's a little bit quiet, but now I'm starting to feel a bit more confident. I've seen another two rays caught. Another ray caught and one lost. That's the one I've had. And there's been a few bites. People have missed bites to my right. And the thing we get on the photo show is sort of, what are we, 90 minutes before high water now? And usually the tide on the flood in the Bristol Channel on our side goes from right to left when it's, when it's filling up. But for some reason at the photo show, it starts to pull left to right early while the, the tide is still flooding. And that, that can be a, a prime time for when the fish come in. And this point here that I'm on, seems to hit the, the rip really easily. The further right you go, the further out the rip goes. So I think I'm in a prime spot here. To me, rip means fish, especially with the bigger fish. I think it's, a, it's just good. These just sit just outside the, the rip, probably waiting to ambush food, I'd guess. Pull that tight. So it's going to start pulling hard now. So what I'm going to be doing is casting up tide. So to my left, leaving a load of slack line out. It's effectively up tide in, leaving that the lead grip into the silt or the muck. And then the rod should bend over. 
Ooh, it was a big bait, someone cast that down. The rod should bend over, and then when you get a bite, it should be a slack line, and you'll see the fish bobbing down tight. There we go, there's a little tip now. Every time we tie a new shock, we put one of these casting snaps on. So that's, that always goes on the end of my shock leader. It's a Tronix casting snap, I think it's called. Use them for years. There's other makes as well, obviously. But that speeds up your fishing time. Because if you've got to retie a knot to tie your rig on every time, you could waste, I don't know, two or three minutes of time. If you have 10 casts, it's half hour gone. Half hour of a session gone. Pure rod as, as well, that is. So by using that, it's just on and off, or off and on even. And it keeps you fishing for longer. There's a little tip. I'm just gonna try a piece of hair in now and squid be just because my bluey's running low. I was stupid, I only brought one bluey and that's all I got left. But old stinking refrozen bluey, and it's been doing the trick. Three fish on that now. Anyway, so hair in is next. We use this bait a lot, it's good for conga, rays, just about anything else. Anything you'd catch on mackerel or bluey, you catch on hair in as well. Now, a way to make this streamlined and e easy to cut as well is to do a diagonal cut. So there I've got about 10 or 12 mil strips, cut at an angle, sharp knife, chopping board. Just cut right through the fish, right through the other side. And that is pretty much your bait. You know, you can't get, you can't expose much more flesh than that, can you? Look at that. All the guts and all the juices. And it's also pointy on, on either end, so it's going to be a streamlined bait. Just check, I'm going to bite over there. So what I'm going to do, I can feel all the oils coming out of it. Just nick it in as usual. Whip that on. If I can find my tool somewhere. Just over there. I'm just going to get a couple of pieces on there. Elastic. Just bind it on. And that, by itself, is a prime bait. All I'm going to do is add a little bit of squid on the back of it. And just bind that on again. Nice and easy. Look at the juices coming out there, they're gonna love that. Just do a couple of half itches. Snap outside the knot. Pull off a tool. And with the with the rays, I don't mind having the, the sliding top hook. I know you would have seen us with the, the fixed panel. But they're such a laid back fish array. They'll swallow it and just pull away slowly. And that's why we use the short uh, shank. It's almost a circle hook, really, isn't it? It's a short shank hook for the top, anyway. And we just nick it in the top. Get that scale off there. And there we go. The prime herring and squid bait. So the tide is just turning. And I, I think it'll be able to pick up the rods uh, are bending nicely into the tide now, so we've got a bit of a run. Which I prefer, like I said earlier, for bigger fish. I don't know if it makes them a bit more confident or if they just have less time to look at a bait and just grab it. You get more positive bites. I think uh, I think it, it could uh, switch on a bit now. I'm going to use the last of my bluey and on the other rod I think I'll try half of this cart wing from Simon Baits for You. South Devon cart I think it is. But it's a nice bait I am going to try it just to mix it up a bit. Let's see what happens. I've put a scratching rig out on that left hand rod. It's a three hook flapper with some size four hooks and little bits of peeler crab. I hope you can pick that bite up. It's been going bonkers for about a minute. It's going to give it a little chew. So I think it's going to be a small fish. If I see another big bite now, I'll go and I'll strike and bring it in. Tap, tap, tap. You there? Could be anything here. We get the codlin close in, white in, rocklin, green eels. 
be a lot of different things. Oh, I don't see he's gone now. There he is, he's there. Right, let's have a look where it is. Stopped again. I'm going to try it. I'd rather not get took a fish anyway. That's promise over the future. Three of these today, no? I said tiny little hooks, little pop up beads just to give it a bit of movement, and small chunks of peeler crab. Just mixing it up while it's quiet. Notice the old uh, bolt, rusty bolt as a, as a weight. No power casting, of course, it's only about 20 yards out. Let's get it back. There we are, that's the last one. I leave them alone now, I leave them in peace. Again, on a little chunk of peeler crab. Yeah, hopefully they'll pack on a bit of weight through the year. When we catch them in the winter, maybe two pound. unclipped but that's the last cast out there let's give it a little soak see what happens well I just reeled my last two casts in I'm gonna call it a day I had no bites that I could see anyway but I managed another codling slightly bigger than the other ones but still a small one took half a cart wing which I'm a big fan of I see I see a lot of potential in that and a squid mantle as well whipped to that so his eyes are a bit bigger than his belly this one I'll get him back shortly. It's just nice to be out today, to be honest, after all, after the lockdown, the strict lockdown. Nice to be back fishing. But as always, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you on the next episode.